Bonjour, Natalie here. Welcome to Franco Foods. Today, I thought it would be fun to kind of go back to our roots, shall we say, and celebrate the basics of French food with a rustic menu. So today, the menu is what we would call in French, un menu champêtre. I'll be making poulet en cocotte, or chicken in a pot. This will be accompanied by roasted vegetables and peasant bread. It's the same peasant bread that I've made in the Coq Monsieur episode, if it's something you want to make. For dessert, I'm making a bread pudding, but with a bit of a twist. Instead of bread, I'm using bagels. And to make it really decadent, I'm going to serve it with a bourbon sauce. So here we go. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to prepare the chicken. I start by patting it dry on all sides as well as inside. At the same time, I'm checking the skin to get rid of any remnants of feathers. Sometimes you'll find the little like hard part of the base of the quill. It's always a, just a good habit, I guess, whether you plan on eating the skin or not. Now, to prepare for this episode, I tried to find some information on the history of poulet en cocotte. I found a lot of recipes, a lot of variations, techniques, but no story of historical significance. So then I started thinking about it and I thought, you know, it kind of makes sense. There's no real time in history or where, aha, here is poulet en cocotte. It's not like something like, you know, how they came up with butter. It was an accident. I can easily imagine in this case, the way the chicken is cooked in a pot, that's the way women, men, whoever's cooking have been doing it for centuries. I mean, if you think about it, you know, you can imagine even in the 1700s or even maybe before then, the wife on the farm and she just puts everything together in a pot pops it in and is ready to feed her family without having to spend hours working at it because she's got so many other things to do. But then after a long day of hard work in the fields, the family has a good hearty meal waiting. This week's cooking vocab is... Rôtir, le poulet, la pomme de terre, le laurier, le romarin. While the chicken is cooking, I'm going to prep the vegetables. Now today I'm roasting Brussels sprouts, carrots, and potatoes. But you can roast whatever you like, it's really your choice. I really like roasted vegetables. My family enjoys them. I just find that roasting brings out just the flavor of the vegetables and the texture of roasted vegetables as well. There's something about it that's just so creamy, buttery almost. The one thing I have learned though is it's important to cook together vegetables vegetables that require the same amount of cooking time or you're going to wind up with some that are burnt mixed in with undercooked vegetables. Been there, done that. <laughs> so I've put a couple of links in the description with uh, roasting times for a variety of vegetables that you might find useful. Making this type of meal reminds me of country restaurants that my husband and I found when we were traveling in France. We had some of the most amazing meals in like these small out of the way places that were like in the country road that you would just a shack would pop up and you'd think oh my but you're hungry and you walk in and the food is just to die for <laughs> usually these these places that we found at least in my experience the wife was in the kitchen the husband is the host and the server maybe sometime there's a, a child they're like a another family member but it's a family affair and they they do it all together there's actually a place in particular that I remember fondly. It was in the city of Dol, spelled D-O-L-E. Actually, fun fact, Dol is the birthplace of Louis Pasteur. So here we are in Dol. We wound up at a little place called Chez Coco. There may be like 10 tables, so maybe 20 diners could be there at one time. It was an amazing meal, and the atmosphere was just wonderful. And the owner was chatting up with his buddies, you know, at the, at the bar. They were The locals were having a drink, and he'd come in chat us up and ask us questions and he asked us if we enjoyed the food and of course we did so we of course were raving about how much we enjoyed it and he just turned his head and yelled out to the kitchen hey, ma mère, ils we just like were howling inside we didn't want to offend anybody but it was just so funny now let's talk about the bread pudding 
So I'm prepping this in the morning and I will cook it later on in the day. You kind of need to plan ahead to make this because you need to soak the bread in an egg mixture for several hours prior to baking. Now the reason I'm using bagels is pretty simple. I just don't have enough bread on hand. So I'm using what I do have, which is two types of bagels. I've got blueberry and I've got cinnamon. Also, the recipe I'm following calls for raisins and most of the people in the family are not huge fans of raisins, so I'm just gonna skip those altogether. Now, also, according to my timing, I figure that I'll be able to let the pudding sit in the fridge for about six hours. This dessert is best served warm, so depending when you bake it, you might need to reheat it a little bit prior to serving. I'm going to make the bourbon sauce for the bread pudding. Now, I've made a few changes to the recipe to accommodate what I already had on hand. I'm a big believer of using what you have on hand, if possible, in a recipe. So in this case, even though it calls for light corn syrup, I'm using dark corn syrup. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. But I also happen to have smoked maple bourbon on hand. So I'll be using that instead of regular bourbon, which I think should be quite delish. If you're in the mood for some comfort food, in my opinion, this meal definitely fits that bill. I mean, the house smells great and, well, homey. Which at the time of filming this, it's cold and rainy, so it's the perfect atmosphere for this kind of meal. Nothing warms you up better than a nice comfort food meal, right? Okay, time for the chicken. The chicken has been cooking for almost two hours. It's ready to be taken out of the oven. Now, since I left the lid on, it's not going to be golden at all. If you wanted it golden, you'd have to take the lid off about 30 minutes before the end of cook time. But then you're roasting it. So it's not exactly a pulianka cut when you're roasting it, right? But that's okay. So after I take the chicken out, I have some beautiful pan drippings. Normally, I'd make gravy. In this case, I'm not. I'm going to use the pan drippings, of course, but instead, I'm going to be serving it au jus. Jus means juice, and the pan drippings, in a way, they're like a juice of the cooking. <laughs> they're a result of the cooking process. The biggest difference, in my opinion, between regular what we think of gravy and au jus is there's no thickening agent added to it, like cornstarch, for example. But if you want to thicken it a bit, which I am doing, you just let it boil so it reduces. It's called a reduction, and it's just the evaporation. It evaporates the extra liquid until it brings it to really the consistency you like. It's not going to be super thick. When you do a reduction, it concentrates the flavors. Once it's done, I pass it through a sieve so it's nice and clean, shall we say. Okay, time to put the chicken on a platter. Now, I'm not the best when it comes to carving, but you know, I think it looks pretty decent. I'm happy with it. And you know, I know I took the bits out for the au jus, what's left in the sieve. I just can't discard it. I mean, think of it, that's full of flavor from the cooking process. So I'm just gonna put it on top of the chicken and I think it'll add a nice little punch of flavor to my meat. Okay, the vegetables are ready. So I'm gonna place them around the chicken, make everything look nice. I have to say, I like the way the leaves of the Brussels sprout do get a little toasty and crunchy. They have a certain natural saltiness, which I enjoy. My joy did add salt to it, so that probably helps. Time for dessert. Okay, the bourbon sauce has a tanginess to it that is due because you add vinegar to the milk when you make the sauce at the very beginning. And there's also a frothiness that kind of took me by surprise. I'm thinking it's due to the baking soda. That said, there's no denying the flavor. It is really good. There's definitely a rich caramelly flavor to it that definitely goes well with the bread pudding. So there you have it. A rustic menu that I hope is worthy of the small French restaurants you find on the countryside. I've really enjoyed making this meal and my family certainly enjoyed eating it. I hope you give some of these recipes a try. All the recipes are linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the like button. Until next time, merci et à la prochaine!